Hi, this is Gareth McDowell from 493K and I want to share with you a few of the things that we've learned over the years uh, about process control and rotational moulding. So what do we mean first of all by process control? Well usually it's temperature process control. So it's controlling your process based on temperature. What's the alternative? Well, a lot of moulders still control their process is based on time. So they put a mould into an oven for a certain amount of time, put it into the cooling bay for a certain amount of time, and then when the part comes out and is demoulded, depending on the quality of that part, you may have a supervisor that modifies the time-based cycling of the machine. That is an open uh, loop process control, a batch process control. And what I want to progress to is the type of process control in our industry that is based on temperature of the mold or temperature of the air inside that mold. So how can we do that? Well, as a molder, you should be aware that there are two main types of temperature monitoring process control. One is open loop control and one is closed loop control. So what's the difference? Open loop control is basically where you monitor the temperature of your mold and you look at the graph that comes up in your, 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 your computer and based on those temperatures that you're monitoring and measuring, you will make a call as to the settings on your machine. Okay, so the, the, the skilled uh, process engineer, he's the guy who closes the loop on that open loop control and that takes quite a bit of skill and takes quite a bit of discipline and management to make sure that you can record and monitor and optimize your cycles so for example that process engineer is going to need to make sure he's got good thermocouples that his coolant packs for his his k pack are cold enough to keep those electronics cool he's going to make sure that the K-Pack is attached to the mold and he's got all his nuts and bolts to get ready to do that in that short window of time where the mold comes out of the cooler, it's demolded and ready to go in again. So there are certain things that uh, the process engineer needs to have uh, ready, prepared. Monitoring those temperatures is quite straightforward then. Uh, he can take that data he can go away, he can analyze it, and he can decide what is the best temperature that you should take that mold to in your oven. What is the best temperature to cool that mold to in the cooler? And when he's made that decision, he may want to cut the part up, look at the part, check the level of cure, uh, maybe perform some mechanical tests on that part, and then decide what the, those key temperatures are. He can then go back to the machine, and he will have to adjust the machine basically in a time-based way. He may add an extra minute or two onto the oven, he may keep it in the cooler for longer, whatever. But the point is, he will make a decision based on the temperatures that he has monitored. He will then go and interrupt the machine, modify the recipe, and then carry on. And that machine will just keep on going at those time-based cycles. And a lot of molders uh, use this kind of open loop process control. And for many instances, it is adequate. You could argue, and I argue this often, whereby even though you have set those temperatures at uh, a constant limit, uh, by, by constraining them with time, there are lots of other things that are changing around that machine. Uh, the temperature of the ambient air is the biggest one. So even though you may have set your cooler to cool that mold for 20 minutes, because the ambient air temperature is changing, the plastic inside that mold will be seeing different cooling rates. Different cooling rates will, cha will change the crystallinity of your, your cool part and therefore affect the mechanical properties. So your properties of that polymer will change uh, even though you're set at a constant time. Now, 
one of the things you can do is increase the frequency of your product, your process engineer's uh, optimization. So rather than him measure the temperature of that mold once a month, he, he might decide to measure it every Monday in the month and adjust the cycles accordingly. Uh, and what will be changing will be the weather, okay? He might decide if it's very changeable, he wants to measure and monitor and optimize that cycle every day. If he is molding uh, an engineering material, a material which requires good process control, then at that point he might decide, well, actually I want to measure and monitor that temperature continuously. And as he sees it on the screen, the temperature's changing, he can go and adjust for the next cycle. This is all still open loop process control, okay? And if he can do that, he's overcome a lot of issues with regards to thermocouples and uh, the, the, the whole process of doing that. He's ready at that point then perhaps to move to closed loop process control. Totally different set of parameters for him to follow. So he's moving from a, a monitoring and an offline uh, changing of the cycle. He's now going to an automated control of that machine. And that step is a big step and should not be underestimated how big that can be. So what is closed loop control? Well, closed loop control is basically where those temperatures that the process engineer was seeing on a screen are actually being read by the machine control itself and the machine controller is deciding what to do on the actual process. So the machine would be looking at the temperature as it rises inside the mold and as it increases and gets closer to a set point the machine would then say okay we've done enough. That set point will need to be set anyway by the process engineer depending on what the, 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 the polymer properties are. But the machine will decide when to stop it in the oven and when to stop it in the cooling. So that is like an on-off type control, an on-off closed loop control. The machine is simply looking at the temperatures and deciding now's the time to stop. That jump from monitoring to automated process control is a jump that many molders are not aware of the significance of or how uh, prepared they must be for that jump. So you've got something automated. It's going on, the machine's working away. Where that generally fails is when we've got human intervention in that automation, okay? When that automation relies on us, supervisors, operators, to make sure something happens. What is it that we usually interfere with as rotomolders in full-time automated process control? It is in the thermocouples. And I can't stress that enough. That is where failure happens the most, in the thermocouples. So how can we avoid that? Well, we can try to get those thermocouples in a fixed position. So every time a mold comes out of the cooler bay, it comes forward to the operators for them to demold it. During that demolding, they unlatch the top half of the mold, they take it apart, and they remove the molded part from the tool. In doing that, very often, that thermocouple has to be disconnected from the mold. And it has to be put back in for that automation to continue. That is the point whereby that automation is being mainly interrupted. Okay, uh, so where can we put those thermocouples? Well, we can put them into the vent pipe, that's fine, but most vent pipes are on the removable half of the mold. So therefore that probe is gonna have to come out of the vent pipe or that probe is gonna be attached to a cable which goes to the fixed part of the mold. So the cabling of the thermocouple is constantly moving. That will wear down the thermocouple cable. There is, there is no way to avoid that. If the operator has to remove the thermocouple from the mold every time, then we have moved to a whole new level of 
potential abuse of the thermocouple by the operator. So the removal and the reinsertion, removal and reinsertion of that, <coughs> excuse me, thermocouple is going to cause the thermocouple to degrade much quicker. Especially if that thermocouple gets stuck in plastic, the first thing the operator is going to do is yank it out. He's gonna pull it out. He may not pull it out by the handle, he'll pull it out by the cable. And in doing so, the cable will then uh, become frayed, loose, damaged, okay? So the best place where you can put your thermocouples is in the bottom half of the mold and in a position where they're fixed and the operator doesn't have to touch them. Now, that is uh, more difficult than it sounds and we'll cover that in, a, in another short video. And, but for now, if you can get your thermocouples in a position where the operators don't have to touch them, you're on a good path towards fully automated process control. So we'll leave it at that. We've covered enough now. What are the takeaways from this? Monitoring, uh, open loop control in rotational molding is where to start. If you're gonna to move to full automated, closed loop temperature control in rotor molding, that's a big jump. And you only can do that jump with much preparation with design of where the thermocouples are gonna go. And the third and last thing would be, uh, give a lot of attention to your thermocouples and the care of your thermocouples when you make that jump. Um, make sure your operators are well trained in how to utilize and take care of those thermocouples. So I'll leave that with you, that's all for now. Thank you very much for your time, thank you.